Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to remind you that one year ago we were thinking about uh, the causes of um, the financial crisis and uh, we're, we're counting the means that were necessary for bailouts. And we're asking question, who failed? Was it the state or the, or the market? The chronicle uh, public uh, deficit uh, and the related rapid growth of public debt uh, leaves no doubt uh, who failed. Uh, and therefore, uh, the, today the question is uh, why did the state fail? Uh, what were the causes of this development and what measures should we take to avoid uh, such failures from occur reoccurring? Uh, one should uh, remind that uh, this is not a problem to, uh, of underdeveloped countries. This is a problem typical to a whole group of uh, the economically most developed countries uh, with the historically and unprecedented uh, welfare, uh, unfortunately, uh, also with unprecedented debt, public debt. Uh, we should therefore ask a question whether uh, the uh, budget expenditure, uh, which are ex in excess of their revenues, are only the consequence of uh, irresponsible uh, spending, or uh, are there any, any deeper roots for that? Undoubtedly, individual failures, uh, professional and moral, objective and subjective, contribute to wrong decisions. Uh, these uh, should uh, be it, it would, however, be possible uh, to co correct them relatively simply by um, adequate uh, adaptations on uh, the expenditure side and revenue side of the state budget. But it's not that simple in reality, and therefore we should think about uh, systemic errors. Uh, speaking from our own uh, experience, we know that all unpopular measures, uh, in including uh, savings uh, in, in public expenditure, uh, so uh, this um, again is, is, is the seed for a new responsible uh, decisions leading again to the need for new reforms. The uh, dissatisfaction of a part of the population uh, usually caused uh, by uh, consolidation uh, gives uh, uh, the soil or provides the soil for the rise of a new generation of irresponsible politicians. This scenario will uh, be repeated uh, once again and again and again um, uh, once we accept uh, the culture which uh, tolerates this, uh, this condition. The, the fact that the deficit problem uh, is present uh, to some extent in all European countries uh, forces us to think uh, about uh, some common features for this development. Therefore, I would like to uh, speak about some cultural facts, certain cultural factors uh, which shape the economic systems. The first factor is the illusion that there exists free lunch. As a paradox, this illusion uh, is prevailing uh, mostly in relation to public uh, means and to public ownership. This illusion is not only the remains of uh, the uh, communist regime, uh, but it's still uh, reinforced as part of the, uh, of the concept of the so-called social or welfare state. Um, but returning to the common sense, uh, it's obvious that there is no free lunch. Uh, so actually, if you get some free lunch, so it's either you borrow it or you steal it from somebody. And the consequence of uh, living with this illusion is increasing depth or uh, injustice uh, committed uh, on those who are, who are successful. Um, that the, and well, um, if you get some free lunch, uh, so the beneficiaries sometimes think the, the, the free lunch is actually for free, but uh, this is no, uh, not true. Uh, the price to, to be paid is the loss of uh, freedom, of independence, of human dignity, and increasing dependence on the state and its institutions. And this uh, leads to a diminishment of uh, the individual freedoms. 
Um, before uh, the rise of socialism, most Slovaks were proud uh, of uh, being able to uh, get their own living. Today, uh, more and more people are receiving various benefits um, uh, and uh, where these are considered to be a, a benefits satisfying the existing claims of individuals against the society. and. Uh, Living uh, in this long-term dependence is no longer a shame, uh, it's, it's normal. And they are living on uh, somebody else's means, and the success of uh, many companies no longer depends on, on the prices and on the quality of products, but it's on, on their uh, ability uh, to uh, convince the government uh, to adopt uh, laws and standards which uh, give them uh, a competitive edge over the competition. And uh, while well, competition is not only the uh, driver of uh, progress, but it's also the driver of bureaucracy and public spending. And while well, this shift uh, in the perception by the people uh, of, of its role against the state, that's the main driver uh, putting uh, the public uh, budgets under long-term pressures. Uh, and well, the second factor is the failure of uh, the social elite or of the leaders. Um, well, with the increasing globalization, the complexity of economic reality also increases. Uh, everything is related to everything that's uh, true in uh, today's economy, and therefore we need to, um, well, to um, realize the interrelationships between various factors, and that only then find solutions in democracies. Uh, well, decisions on uh, important economic uh, issues are passed in a mechanism which does not uh, allow to um, uh, allow uh, sufficient assessment, professional assessment of the issue. So it's, for example, through the elections. Uh, and well, the, the leadership should be perceived in a different uh, way, and uh, very often uh, it's Fox Populi or the will of the people is uh, becoming the imperative in the political battle, and uh, no wonder then uh, instead of uh, right uh, decisions and right solutions, we have popular uh, solutions, and those decisions uh, are becoming unsustainable. Uh, the question of balanced budget of uh, consumer or consumption spending, that's uh, no matter whether you are on the left wing or the right wing, uh, it's uh, a question of the common sense and uh, the will to follow the common sense. Um, no matter what government, so whether a left wing or a right wing, cannot live on a debt. Uh, I believe that what could contribute to the solution to the problem is that we should really return to uh, the values, to well-proven values. Uh, we had had enough uh, rules, regulations. Uh, the, the problem was that uh, we did not comply with those regulations. So the Maastricht rules, uh, they, they were in place for 15 years, but we did not comply with them. And we should really stick to the values uh, and uh, on, on which form the basis for our society, uh, freedom, uh, truth, uh, goodness, uh, honesty. Uh, so if, if they are not only formal, uh, if, if uh, justice and truth is more formal than, than in reality, we can really uh, expect sophisticated, creative, and um, expensive uh, bypassing of those rules or their direct violation, as we witnessed in the case of Andron or Greece. Uh, the role of political, economic, cultural, and religious leaders uh, is cultivate those values in the society, on the field of education, of information, and also in, in the practical life. Uh, from, from the long-term perspective, whether uh, in the interest of prospering economy or uh, in the interest of morality, these are the values worth fighting, fighting for, and it really pays off fighting for them.